Greetings to one and all here from our safety studio in Bloemfontein. During the session, we're going to have a look at safety through, in this case, probably the lack of knowledge and the lack of skills. We, also, we might have the healthy attitude, but safety through knowledge, skills and attitude is going to be, again, at the core of the discussion. Recently, a lot of research has shown that a significant amount of accidents happen during the approach, specifically the landing phase where uh, direction of control is lost or control of the aircraft is lost and then specifically on the takeoff as well. So I'm going to cover the aspects in this session. All right. Right, so let's without further ado tackle uh, the issue of landings and takeoffs. First of all, there's a couple of safety concerns, and the first safety concern that we're looking at is that many accidents happen during the visual approach. In other words, it's VFR conditions, and everybody is fully in control, and when one can see, yet the accidents happen. Then there's poor landing technique that we have to look at, and then um, I, I have seen during the test that I do many, many, many different techniques, and um, the basic elements need to be there and we're going to have a look at that. Poor recovery technique when things go bad. What do you do when things go bad? Uh, there's time so it's going to, it goes bad with me as well. Uh, with most people something can go wrong. All right. And there's a lot of vulnerabilities uh, and they are of safety concerns when you put everything. So we'll touch a little bit on that. And then uh, lastly from the safety concern point of view you're going to look at the lack of aerodynamic knowledge which has got a relevance to the actions what we, that we are going to discuss. All right, so let's have a look at the normal landing technique. And first on, let's do a little bit of orientation. All right, on here, we've got the approach path, we've got the runway, and we can see three very distinct uh, phases of this approach prior to touchdown and there will be the straight descent then there is the the round out or level of phase the holding off phase which is then with the landing phase after that obviously there will be a go around or a takeoff or whatever the case might be All right here we're looking at the point of impact I call it the theoretical point of impact so once we are on final approach, what we need to understand is that on the final approach, you would like to ensure that the descent angle stays the same. If you're going to chase the speed when it's high and low and you're going to fly like this all the time down, imagine the passengers, how they will feel, and maybe even your instructor feel sick. Uh, that is not the way to do a final. Final approach is like an ILS, nose must be steady. The speed of the aircraft here will definitely change and will have to be corrected. And we're now going to discuss how that is done. Okay, so we're talking about a constant angle that needed and the nose of the aircraft. And normally that's about four fingers below the threshold, obviously depending on your aircraft. The next point that I need to make here is that the angle, as I say, is obviously a constant. And then here, we fix up the speed with power changes, the rate of descent with power changes. In other words, the impact point, theoretical impact point stays the same. Remember, somewhere along the line, we are going to chicken out. Now, if we look at the next theoretical impact point is there once you get here to the round out from now on the aircraft must go level it must level off and for you to understand how close you are to the ground remember you will have to look outside and you will see the ground and you will see it as it is you will level off and start flying um, parallel or then level with the ground. That is the very next phase. After that phase, once you've attained the level flight, only outside is where you have to look 
and then only then this is where you then close the power so during this round out phase you still got the power on I think that's where um, in advanced flying of course you can close the throttle before you get there but in this case remember that if you want to make it easy for somebody or for yourself is that you follow the straight path down you do the round pound and only now you're going to um, close the power right so the hold off is the next phase that is very important now once you are standing out looking outside you have to look outside to be able to actually see the relationship between the aircraft and the ground there is nothing to see inside if you are now peeping inside all the time once you've closed the throttle once you've leveled off and now you're negotiating the hold off till there is the landing phase in that once you look inside you actually make yourself blind so just be very careful how you think about this many a times when a student struggles with landing then I would blank off his instruments totally after the power is closed so that he, forcing him just to look at the nose of the aircraft versus the horizon and now comes the story with this round out here is that I can see the the meerkat necks stretching up trying to look over the nose as the nose comes up 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 trying to look over the nose losing sight of the ground and obviously there's a problem you can look slightly left of the nose if you're sitting on the left you're sitting on the right from the instructor seat I normally look slightly to the right right so that's quite important that we really pay attention to what is happening outside the aircraft that is naturally very important and then there's the landing phase now the one thing about the landing phase is this this normally happens theoretically at the critical angle so as you are holding the aircraft off from the ground ensuring that it's longitudinally aligned the longitudinal axis with the center of the runway as you're holding the aircraft off 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 there will come a time when it will reach the critical angle or the stalling angle and the aircraft will settle on the ground so if you can fly level to the ground hold it off a couple of inches one foot or two maybe off the ground and you can see um, nobody is perfect so you, you know you're going to slightly high slightly low and cover 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 don't land don't land don't land and as you get closer to the ground there the aircraft actually don't want to see and the hooter key hooter inside will go beep or whatever <laughs> if you want to look once you've got a nose up attitude it's fine to land because you're going now to avoid landing on uh, the nose wheel and the hold off is therefore very important so hold off hold off and the aircraft will settle itself many a problem that we've seen here now is that people and we talk about it hot and high they're coming in they're too high they're too fast for the configuration uh, maybe not enough flap uh, flap is a very important part remember that use the flaps that's they are there to create the necessary drag so that you can fly with power again so that it gives you stability and an end that's not what it's all about here but remember use the flaps look outside once the throttle is closed look outside don't try and stretch your neck until it can't be anymore look to the sides pick up the reference on the runway and hold off all of the aircraft will sink and there you on the runway maintaining once the touchdown is there outside visual reference to ensure that the runway is completely in sight at all all times great so now we can recap the normal landing and first of all remember that the setup must be according to the operator's handbook that's the speed now the landing speed is normally worked out and what they are doing is they're taking the basic stalling speed or maybe I should just correct it the stalling speed in the landing configuration in other words the flaps and once you determine that stalling speed that is without power times 1.3 that will give you your V ref 
your VREF is the speed that you want when you get over the threshold, except when there's crosswind conditions, wind shears, and stuff like that. We're not going to go into that right now. Make sure that the speed in landing configuration is correct and set yourself up. You know, once, once you sit in the back of an aircraft and you go and you hear that you're sitting as a passenger at the back and you hear the engines go up and down and up and closed, then you know the pilot there is fighting himself. It's not stable. You must really try and get things stable. Constant power setting, nose attitude, one point, and now fix up everything with the power. Be stabilized in the approach before commencing. When you go past 500 feet on the final, according to ICAO, that is where you, you need to be in the final landing configuration, and this is where you've got your fuel flap, you're ready to land. Um, so remember, in normal circuit training, is when you're uh, turning final, you should normally have 500 feet on the final. Once you've turned final approach, that is when the full flap goes down. You're in landing. Well, that is if you're going to land with full flap. I prefer full flap landings most of the times if I can. And then uh, once you've got your flap settings, speed is stabilized. Trim the aircraft. That is very important. And then just continue onto the one spot, keeping the nose on one spot. And if the speed wants to run away, just bring back a little bit of power. Once the power is correct, the speed resultant is correct. But remember, as you make power punches, the nose will tend to pitch slightly up or down. Your job is now to keep that nose an absolute constant. Now, observe that the theoretical impact point ahead of the aircraft Now, if it's a big airfield, you know, you can aim for the threshold. But when you're flying at the smaller ones where we do, then we normally aim about 50 meters short of the threshold. And, and, and that is just to make sure that uh, we've got more runway to play with. Because if you want to do a touch and go and you land too deep, and, and remember there's normally a floating size uh, period where the aircraft will float before touchdown. So it's important to take carefully into consideration the length of the airfield. The next one is that you must maintain that attitude irrespective of the speed fluctuation. Obviously, that's within the normal uh, speed errors, all right? If things go drastically wrong, and it will call for drastic measures. But remember to keep the nose a, a, a constant. And you fix up all the errors with the power and then you will change the nose attitude as is required. The next thing is you must start the out the start the out when required to avoid flying into the ground. So remember, I was saying here that you keep the constant path in the way down, and now this is the theoretical impact point. I start rounding out the aircraft because I don't want to have an accident. And I level this off to, to maintain level flight. At the same time, I have to look outside. That is very important. So on the center line, just again, just to look here, on the center line of the aircraft, um, for the men that's all right, I say they must put it in between the, uh, you know, well, everybody in between the legs, if you can have your, your, your center line there. Um, all right, so after level off has been achieved, only now, and this is very important, let me, let me do this in right. Only once the level off have been achieved, then we close the power. Now you'll say to me, but Charlie, man, you know, I can close the power. Yes, once you've got experience, that's not a big problem. But remember, our problem is that... In order to use the same technique, if I get into a new aircraft I don't know, I use this technique. And it normally results in a pretty controlled uh, landing. And the big thing is once I'm level and I'm already there and I look outside, I close the throttle very slowly. I can 
hold on and cover and cover and cover for the aircraft not to touch the ground. All right, anticipate that the aircraft will tend to descend towards the runway and small changes. I think a lot of times we, we, we use the, the, the big changes and, and, you know, that just puts you in trouble and you've got to redo what you've overdone. Now, what I say is all the time from the instant that the throttle is being closed after level off, there's nothing more to see inside the aircraft. Eyes must now be outside. In order to judge the flight and the distance of making small corrections, avoiding to land, avoiding to land. And that's one of the big secrets about the smaller aircraft is that you actually do not want to land. You're trying let me grab this. Yeah. Um, you're trying, if this is the ground level here, you are trying to keep this aircraft, she wants to land, you keep her off, keep her off, keep her off, keep her off. And now you get to the crick and she doesn't want to fly anymore and she puts it down. The aircraft lands herself. That is the idea. Now, everything... Again, I mentioned everything is outside. There is nothing inside the cockpit. Look here now. There I give you exclamation mark. Nothing. There is nothing inside the cockpit that you have to see. And I've got to make that very clear. Because this is where we normally, you know, start making our first um, mistakes. It's not to see. You've got a flight medical and... That means you, you're not blind. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying that with all respect. Remember, if you cannot see, you cannot have a license. You cannot negotiate to land. Otherwise, it'd be an auto landing system. And we're definitely not talking at this moment of auto landing system. And then as we carry on, the next one is once the nose is higher and you cannot see over the nose, just look to the sign. Stop this meerkat attitude to trying and outstretch it. Your neck just simply can't, uh, you know, go that high. Maintain visual outside until the decision. In fact, all the time that you're on the ground, your main focus must be outside. You must see the, the relative attitude of the aircraft on the horizon, the longitudinal aligned with the, with the runway, and so on. Now, when you start to go the, the go around when if you decide to go around obviously then okay let me start by saying this uh, you know one of the big problems that I see is that uh, once the guys have landed they want to clear up the aircraft and you know do it like the big boys are doing and the big boys has got two people in the aircraft and they've got very specifics the aircraft also has got squat switch switches that will make sure that the undercarriage cannot come up after uh, touchdown and you'll say to me, but no, I'm flying a fixed undercarriage and, and I can just lift up the flap. That's not a problem. That's fine. But tomorrow, when you're going and you're flying into a retractable undercarriage, your habit is going to be that to pick up the flaps on the runway. Run through, pull off, stop, do, and pay full attention to the after landing. Remember, single crew. That is what we have to do. All right. So, during the go-around phase here, on the ground, this is where we now want to retract the flaps. Now, what I'm saying here is, let the, let's say you have forgotten about this. If, you, you know, you just simply didn't pick up the flaps. It's not the end of the, the world. Get airborne. But once you're airborne, once you... Airborne with your full flaps. Now, as you're in the air, just maintain the aircraft in level flight to accelerate. And once you accelerate the aircraft, that'll be fine. Here I say, accelerate the aircraft five knots at a time. And when you do the five knot thing, that is when you pick up one notch of flaps. All right. And the guy said to me, but I've got this electric system and you've got a count. Yes. You put it down. You count one, two, three, check, and it stops there. One, two, three, check. One, two, three, check. Full flaps. Then on the go around, up, 
one, two, three, check. Leave it there, accelerate first, then one, two, three, check. And once you accelerate another five knots, that's when it can up. Now, obviously, you're going to wait until you're uh, 300 feet about ground to do your after takeoff. And I know it's pretty sort of fun hot to, <laughs> you know, to do it very early, undercarriage up, flaps up, and we accelerate. And those things advance flying fine. Uh, if you get into bad habits, remember you're gonna, <laughs> you, you can't decide when to apply uh, a bad habit or when not to apply the bad habit. The next that we're going to look at is the actual touchdown. And this is where many, many misses happen, obviously due to, first of all, looking inside instead of looking outside. We've now said that more than once. Your height and directional judgment is the problem. Not maintaining the longitudinal after extra after line with the runway. I, I cannot understand. Yeah, you're sitting inside the aircraft. This is where you've got to look outside. You've got to go a little past the nose. You've got to see it. And you must maintain your directional control. Drift you sort out with ailerons, but directional controls on the rudder. All right, um, there I've said it, countering drift with the ailerons, not holding off to f uh, facilitate a slow speed landing. If you don't hold it off and you slam in, or, you know, a very high speed landing, and then I've seen this quite a lot, where the guys come in, high speed landing, and there's virtually no round out and the nose wheel. Once the nose wheel touches, you lose directional control. I mean, come on. So... That is what you do not want. If it happens that the nose will touch us, just gently, gently ease her up and go back into the level and try and get that the wheels are on the ground. But to avoid this, if you don't see the ground, you cannot avoid the ground. Look outside. There's nothing inside. I judge it. I never want to land level. All right. This, this, is, this is big stuff and this is carrier landing stuff. I want to hold off, hold off slightly, hold off slightly. In fact, I want to hold off as long as I can because it will be the slower speed that I'm going to land at. And there's obviously many um, advantages in that technique. Not holding off to avoid the nose wheel touching before the main wheels, that's another one of those mishaps. Um, forcing the aircraft down when too much height and speed's rolling on the nose wheeler. A nose wheeler. A nose wheeler. We do nose wheel landings in a in a, a tail dragger. Well, then we call it the main wheels. All right. Now even the tail dragger, we want to land either in the three point attitude where the third wheel and the nose these touch together, or if that is not going to be the case, we do a wheeler and we roll it on. Now this is not about tail dragging, so let's. Let's just hold on for that. Um, you need to keep it off. If you're on the nose, as I said, you're losing directional control of the aircraft. And that happens very, very quickly. Um, if, there's, if it happens to you, take your power. Go around. Ballooning due to overreactiveness on the stick during the round out to hold off. And this, once again, is during the hold of phase, what happens is that we're trying to see inside. You know, and I land with somebody and I, I say, wow, you know, okay. Um, he says to me, no, the touchdown speed was uh, 50 knots or whatever. Uh, why, are you looking at the, why are you looking at the speed? You should be looking outside. No wonder you can't do the good landings. But when you start doing the good landings according to their technique, then people say, wow. You've got to have a lot of experience to be able to do that. No, you must do the right technique. That's all. Ballooning due to overreactiveness, we've now spoken about that, and the ballooning due to not looking at the runway surface versus the aircraft height. And you are losing the awareness. You do not know where you are. Oh, this one I've seen quite a bit, especially uh, your slightly heavier aircraft like your your Barons, uh, Senecas, and you know aircraft like that, 
where the guy sitting on final, he's got his feet on the brakes. By mistake, he's got lightly applied brakes. And it's not like in a big aircraft where they've got brake settings. Once you've got the brakes on, the accelerators and wheels cannot keep up and they rip and they, they burst the tires. And that is something you do not want. Make sure heels on the floorboards and that you've got them. Once you're on the ground and the wheels are turning at the rate that they should, then you can slip up and you can use differential braking and so forth if you want. But do not try on a high-speed landing to control the direction by differential braking. Not very good uh, idea and it can you know, lead to the tire bursting thing. All right, high speed running resulting in overrun of the, air, uh, the, uh, the runway. Th this I've seen, and you know, this is quite, <laughs> okay, it's not really funny, but um, you know, that's when everybody, you're really trying to break and stop this aircraft. Um, remember that many a poor landing is a result of a poor approach. If you keep the right speeds, if you keep the constant angle, if you round out and level off properly, and then you've got a fighting chance if you look outside. After landing procedures, as I say here, remember this, um, do not do it on the after landing run. I've seen many uh, undercarriages instead of flaps that were picked up. Now, as the hold of continuous and nose attitude needs to increase, the pilot stretches like a meerkat. This is how I said, okay. But next we're going to look at the applicability of the knowledge and skills when it concerns stalling. Because in the landing phase, that is exactly in the landing phase where the knowledge of stalling and how to recover if things go bad that you need to understand. So, the most important things is to well, recognize the symptoms. Look here. Recognize the symptoms of the approaching stall. If you don't recognize something, there's nothing you can do about it. And take recovery action before the actual stall is taking place. This is what you really want to do. If you can see the trouble coming and you can avoid the trouble, then you are a for away. But if you do not see the trouble coming, okay, now... Before we go there, let's say, the take of recovery, what is the actions that need to be taken when you see the trouble is coming? First of all, decrease the load factor, lowering the nose or releasing the pressure. And that's the pitching pressure. Now, a lot of people don't think so. When we say to recover from a stall, they say you must lower the nose to reduce the angle of attack. Yes, that is true. But your speed will not instantaneously be there. But if you unload the aircraft, if you sit lighter in your aircraft, the first thing that will happen is that it will reduce the stalling speed of the aircraft. That's exactly what you want. Just one of those small little tips that you must remember. The next one, add power. I, I cannot understand why you don't add power when you're in trouble. This is how you're going to gain your uh, directional control. Remember, if you've got a little bit of height available, then you can use that. Because height is potential energy which can be put on into kinetic energy. All right. Then, um, if the stall has occurred. Now, this is a different story. Remember, we have just now spoken about the fact is, you know, how to see it and how to avoid it and what you need to do. And now, unfortunately, the aircraft is going into the stalling phase. What do we do now? Remember, we're close to the ground. The recognition of the aircraft is in fact stalled. Ah, now you must recognize that it's stalled because if you do not recognize recognition that the aircraft has in fact stalled because how will you know what remedy to apply if you do not see what is wrong? Unload the aircraft by lowering the nose or release the back pressure. And the unloading means to reduce the G's at that specific stage. Now we've just spoken about that. Lowering the nose attitude and load will also ride and reduced angle of attack. Neutralize the rudder. Mm. 
neutralize the rudder and the ailerons and apply full power. Remember, you, you obviously cannot do this one if you, you, you can't do that if you're on the ground. But in the air, please, a lot of people, when they, they go around, they lose it, they lost the direction, and they're trying to, to correct it. Let the aircraft then go, obviously, depending on you know, what is outside the aircraft. Once the aircraft is, uh, is again above the stalling speed, roll the wings level to the nearest horizon. Now, this is actually the full recovery technique, you know, once you're stalled. Once you're close to the ground, it's going to be very difficult to sort that one out. Okay. I think very clearly and pinpoint the reason for approaching or entering an unwind or unsuspected stall. Just want to reiterate uh, this one. I say, once something has happened, think very clearly what led to the situation. Because if you understand what led to the situation, then you can do something about it, and you can learn from that. But just to shrug it off, is, okay, it's, it's one of those things. It's really not good enough. Because you're going to put yourself in, in harm's way every time. Right. So... <laughs> just learn from your mistakes. All right, so next, we have to look at recovering from a bad landing. I mean, we had a bad landing, so now we've got to recover. What, what is it that we need to think about and to do? There's a little bit of theory behind this. The aircraft landed in landing configuration, undercarriage, and probably full or second flop net, uh, not of flaps. Okay, this is just to state what configuration when the landing configuration stall speed is lower than the clean configuration I've talked about this how you can determine V ref or the last speed that you want after you've leveled off and you close the throttle ground effects assist, uh, assists only when the aircraft um, is in ground effect and not when it has ballooned out of ground effect that's very important so don't just think ground effect is there for the taking, you've got to be in the effect of the ground to, for the ground to be effective. Unload the aircraft will reduce the soaring speed. Unload. There the word is again. Unload or lower. Don't pull. Release the pressure. Sit lighter in your seat. Unloading and lowering the nose signal needs height. If you've got the height, if you haven't got a height, just level off. I know we're talking about unloading or busy now. It's a bad landing, the aircraft is ballooned, whatever. You want to unload the aircraft, you can't fly back into the ground, so you're lowering to level and you open up the power and you regain control. Getting the nose and the level flight will, will only, uh, it will definitely aid unloading, the angle of attack will be lowered, and so forth, and so forth. So that's good. Now, adding full power, that is the magic ingredient. Let me, let me just get this magic ingredient in, uh, 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 online there. Once you are sitting and you're in trouble and you lose direction or whatever, open up the throttle. Unload the aircraft. Let it accelerate. Um, it will definitely give you a few advantages. So, and from a practical, that was the theoretical point of view. Now let's look at the practical point of view. Recognition uh, that it is not a good landing and a landing that needs additional action, that's vital. You know, don't let pride uh, get hold of you. Uh, it's not going to work. You're not going to impress anybody really. Uh, not anybody that I know uh, that understands the flying and flying techniques anyway. Recognition can only take place if one is looking outside. So that, again, is key to recover. Attitude and direction is both very important, but when you're aware through looking and seeing outside. Seeing can many times not be facilitated directly over the nose of the aircraft. So look to the side. Stretching like a mirror will not help to see over the nose of the aircraft, but looking inside. Inside there's nothing. Outside is everything. 
then immediately unload the aircraft to a level with the ground. And this is quite, you want to fly level with the ground. Remember, you don't want to climb, and you don't want to descend, you don't want to fly back into the ground. If you fly back into the ground now, let's just uh, get this one. You've now de ballooned, you overreacted on the unloading, and the aircraft goes down. You're going to hit the ground there. Um, many times in the simulator, if you give a guy an engine cut right after takeoff, they know that they've got changed the attitude. And you know that 80% of the time the, the guys fly into uh, the ground. Um, just the first time. If I do it a second time, then they've learned and, 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 and they know. So remember, you've got to try level flight and you don't want to put any loading. You don't want to pull any Gs very, very smoothly and lightly on the aircraft. Right. Um, if the speed is too low to facilitate another roundup before to touch up, immediately, immediately, immediately apply full power. And I know there can be a lot of discussion about this, but power is really the saver. Take care to maintain the level of flight by countering the aircraft tendency to pose niche, uh, uh, pitch nose up during uh, the application of power. And we very well know that every time that you increase power, the nose tends to pitch up. If you close power, it tends to pitch down. And that needs to... Look, uh, advanced guys will come, they flare, they will take a little bit of power, and they will reassess the landing. That comes with experience. That is if there is enough runway left. That if you fully know what you're doing. That is if you're in full control. That is if you really understand your aircraft and the conditions. But the right way to do it, you balloon, you see that it's too bad, you level off full throttle, and in ground effect, you now accelerate, and then as you climb away, you start taking up the flaps. Fly level with the ground without harsh inputs. All right. Do not pick up the flaps quite yet. The lowest stalling speed of your aircraft is... Look, look here. The lowest stalling speed of your aircraft is with full flaps, uh, with full flaps and full power. That is very, very important. Next on is the recovery. During the recovery phase, do not increase flaps either as this will certainly distract you from maintaining slow speed. Now, I have just said that um, if you've got full power and full flaps, that's the best and the slowest that you'll be able to fly your aircraft. But if you haven't got full flap, don't go for full flap. That's not you. You want speed. All right. Once you've got full flap and full power, small movements you'll be able to control. All right. So I don't want you to go the wrong way about this. Once the aircraft is under control, slowly in initiate the climb and retract the flaps notch by notch every five knots. Um, increase in speed. Choose another approach and use the technique that we've discussed. Uh, the, uh, it's, 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 it's madness to not walk away from a landing that you could have. Uh, if you're professional, you will go around when it's needed. If your ego takes over, well, then normally Mother Earth is the winner in this one. All right. So there's no dishonor in going around. Professional pilots do it all the time, and they walk away to fly another day. Now for the go-around, uh, many myths have happened during the go-around, and why do they happen? Well, first of all, the go-around decision is made too late. You, you really have to be on the ball with what you're doing. Don't wait until it's... Well, how will you know when it's too late? You've got to be on, um, on the game. You can't sit there and dawdle. It's not a decision that can wait until tomorrow. You've got to have your finger right out. <laughs> okay, that was an old saying I haven't used for a long time. If you've got the wrong power settings, wrong configuration, that's on the go-around. Eh? So remember that during the go-around, all these things are pretty much uh, and very, very much so important. A lot of guys lose directional control on the runway because they're not looking outside. Over-rotation because you're not looking out. Loss of situation awareness. 
because you are not considering, you're not seeing the outside. And then this one, aggressive and hard maneuvering close to the ground. This is where you are gentle. This is where you show a lot of respect. And then the low speed downwind turns, not having accelerated the aircraft or cleaned up the aircraft, uh, it, it's one of those. So let's have a look a little bit at the go-around you know, techniques. Apply full power will always, in a single prop, result in a yaw to the left. Be noticed to, you must anticipate that, how you can see outside and you counteract with the rudder. Remember that the rudder is pretty much effective now that you have actually, you know, put some power on. Maintain directional control looking outside to see the result. One stabilize, peep inside to ascertain the airspeed. And when required, unstick. Unstick is when you take the aircraft off from the ground. The actual unstick or physical takeoff is a smooth maneuver with the intention to get airborne and accelerate in level flight to the climbing speed. And the climbing speed is the VY, because we're not looking at different configurations. I say that full power must be applied during this phase. And I see a lot of people is like half-heartedly on the power. Once you start moving the power, one, two, three, four, it's open, and you just peep inside to see, have I got forward? You just peep inside. Your eyes are out, and you peep inside, and it's out, and you peep inside. Notice I don't move my head in and out all the time. I look at you, my eyes go inside, I peep inside and I look outside. I look outside and I peep inside and I can see and I'm flying the aircraft. That is physically what one should do. Now the trim settings would be totally out and this is very important. Once the trim settings are out, what are you going to do about that? You've got a trim obviously. Trim and never fly against pressures where the aircraft wants to deviate from the intentions. Um, you, you, you you know that I, as a, a technique, is after takeoff, wait until the person has established the climb, settled, reduced the power, and then to get them into the habit, I will start counting one, two, three, four. Five, hands off. Now, my guys already know that I'm going to start this counting. Now, whether I count one or 1,000 or one crocodile, it doesn't matter. It gives them, ooh, I've got to trim. And then they trim. It's like when you get an engine cut. It's the first thing you need to do. Trim! Because you want the aircraft to maintain the speed so you can take, pay attention to other stuff. Don't overtax um, your brain at that moment in time. After take must be done according to your manual. But when done too low, or that good? So don't don't be even cut, you know. Height does not only give potential energy, but is equated to time. You need time to be able to do the next thing. Premature turn out with full flap and after takes or complete this is foolish, dangerous, ignorant, and so on, so on, so on, so. And many of the accidents that we're talking is people take off, didn't clear up the aircraft, early out, early out turn, things go pear-shaped, and the end result is a lot of tears from everybody else. It is not necessary. Flying is not that dangerous. In, uh, we know the pitfalls. But that means that when we know it, we must pay attention to it and that we must stay away from that. It's pretty much like anything else that is worthwhile in life. It's not a freebie. It's not a free go. All right. Over-rotating, that's another one that we have to got to look at. VFR flight scans must always originate from outside. Oh, this is one thing that we've got a problem with. People want to, to fly uh, your computer games. Everybody is sitting and they're watching and they're sitting inside. I'm watching inside the aircraft what's happening because that's what we do in a computer game. We're sitting inside. We haven't never been taught a proper scan anyway. So we don't know attitude, bang, VSI and DI. But where's the attitude? There, outside. That's where the attitude is. Not the one inside. Outside. 
the longitudinal axis of the aircraft and the lateral axis of the aircraft in relationship to the horizon. That's what we're doing. This is where you determine the attitude. All right? And it must be the correct attitude. Attitude in the case of climbing and descent will a constant power setting will result in different speeds achieved. Look at look 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 what I'm saying here. Attitude in the case of climbing and descending with a constant power setting will result in different speeds. So your attitude now here will result in the correct speed. Uh, please stop chasing the speed needle. If you see something, the speed is not right. Look at your attitude, change the attitude, verify what's happened now. Ah, with this new attitude I selected, speed is coming down exactly where I want it, and that's it. If you look at the speed, as the speed increases, you're going to pull back, and then it's going to be too much and too low. But you will never know how much. But if you do an attitude and you can recognize the attitude, you can change the attitude to a recognizable position and, 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 and. You've got a reference. Changes must be done according to your reference. And uh, okay, let me call it a loose needle inside of airspeed or VSI. <laughs> it's not something you can fly on. All right. Attitude. Attitude. And I'm talking about aircraft attitude. And if you will use the aircraft attitude, then your attitude will also be cool. All right. If you do not look and see, do not look and see. Don't just look because that's what we said. Seeing, you, you must understand. There must be meaning. If you don't do that, you are flying blind, and blind people, unfortunately, cannot obtain a flying license. And that's for very, very obvious reasons. Pilots are taught to react to what they become aware of. And there is nothing like this. The only thing that makes us, or the primary thing that makes us aware, is our eyes. We use our ears a lot because we can hear the sounds and very much tuned into to the sounds there. We can feel vibrations and stuff like that. Tasting not so much, but we can also smell if there's a little bit of uh, smoke or strange smells in the aircraft, but primarily eyes. When we're in the cloud and we cannot see anything, eyes. The rest will tell us foolish stories, the eyes and the instruments, the eyes. But now this is VFR flight. So where do we want to take a main cue from? The horizon outside and the referencing inside. The aircraft will always tend to deviate from the intended heading. Air aircraft is, 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 is like that. An aircraft doesn't want you, uh, will not stay there. It will always continually try to deviate from the norms that you set. So flying is reactive. Autopilot is a reactive function. It senses and then it counteracts. It senses and it counteracts. And that's the same way that we fly. We sense and then we counteract. But the way that we sense is primarily, primarily through our eyes in the visuality and the visual outside. Feeling has got a lot to do with it, but remember that once you are blind, seat of the pants means absolutely nothing. You can't be blind. Don't make yourself blind. All right. Um, overreaction, over rotation, over anything is normally due to not being visual. If you are not visual, you do not know what you are doing and you are chasing needles. Don't chase needles. When aware of overreaction, make immediate step according to the visual cues outside the aircraft. And with full power, the correct attitude will run at correct speed and also the rate of climb. That, everything, is the added value. But full power, that is the one that we want to do. Over rotation, well, you know, just check it and get it right. So, that, I'm afraid, is all that I've got for normal landing technique at this stage of the game. Then just to very quickly sum up. If you do not look outside, you're going to be blind. Blind people cannot land and take off aircraft. They need guidance. Now, we've 
got auto landing systems, you haven't got an auto landing system. We haven't got an auto takeoff system, we've got auto nothing. You are the auto. And that is what I wanted to bring out here. All these accidents is because we didn't see. If we don't see, we cannot comprehend. If we cannot comprehend, we cannot come up with the correct antidotes. So, go out there and enjoy. Remember, this is our privilege.